Hello and welcome to PMCLounge.com. Today we will discuss two things which are very, very closely related. First is sensitivity analysis and second is tornado diagram. As you can see on your screen right now in the background image is a tornado. You don't have to worry about the tornado. All that you need to worry about is to understand what sensitivity analysis really is and how do you draw a diagram which is known as tornado diagram as always if you are into reading articles then first link in the description is going to take you to an article on this topic over at our official website bmclounge.com also this topic is part of risk management knowledge area so if you want to go over other videos that we have done on risk management knowledge area that will be linked in the second link in the description below the entire playlist check that out all right that being clear that being said let's get started a friendly reminder please like this page that seems to be the only way youtube is going to let you know the next time we publish a video so i think a good question to start this off is to understand where we are we are talking about tornado we are talking about sensitivity are we still talking about project management well of course we are because sensitivity analysis is basically a tool and technique of perform quantitative risk analysis process and i mentioned in the initial slide as well that these concepts sensitivity analysis as well as tornado diagram which are closely related are basically part of risk management knowledge area and now you see the process as well under risk management knowledge area which these topics are part of here is the pgka or the process group knowledge area mapping the knowledge area that we are talking about is project risk management the process group that we are talking about is the planning process group and this is the process that is in question right now quantitative risk analysis perform quantitative risk analysis and like i said sensitivity analysis is basically a tool and technique under this process so let's define sensitivity analysis now this is where you are going to look at one variable or just one risk factor in complete isolation so let's say for your project you have a list of risks you have a list of risk factors that might impact your project when you are doing sensitivity analysis what you are basically doing is that you are going to look at only one risk factor or only one variable in total isolation that means you consider just one risk and you assume that the rest of the project is going to go as per the plan so when you do that you are going to analyze the impact of this risk factor on your project in total isolation so what it basically means is in your project if you had a list of 10 risks when you are doing sensitivity analysis what you are considering is only one of those 10 risks actually materialize and what is the impact of this one risk materializing have on your project that is what you are basically analyzing when you're doing sensitivity analysis so let's take an example let's say one of the risks in your project one of the risk factor was the risk of procurement delay and if you have worked on uh, construction projects if you have worked on it infrastructure projects where you have to uh, you know procure hardware you will agree with me when I say that procurement delay is like the most common risk that all projects will have all such projects will have which require any kind of procurement. So when you are doing sensitivity analysis of procurement delay risk, you are only going to consider the delay that the procurement will have on your project while assuming that all the other risk factors all the other variables they are constant 
or they will not materialize. So you will look at procurement delay risk in complete isolation. That is what sensitivity analysis is all about. A quick reminder, all our PMP courseware articles and videos are completely free and available on this link, pmclounge.com slash PMP training. Check it out. So now let's talk about this fancy term known as tornado diagram. And I mentioned in the beginning itself that sensitivity analysis and tornado diagram are closely related. So how are they related? When you're doing sensitivity analysis, you are basically looking at a project's risk factor, one risk factor in total isolation, and you're considering how much impact this risk is going to have on your project if it were to materialize. Now, how do you represent this impact? This is where tornado diagrams basically come in. So tornado diagrams are used to represent a project's sensitivity to each risk factor in total isolation. And you obviously achieve this by concentrating on only one uncertain factor or just one risk factor and you assume that the rest of the project is basically moving as per the plan. So let's take a look at an example. Now this is the table that represents all the risks that the project team has planned for in a project. So you've got training gap, missing the coding milestone, you've got extending test coverage, schedule impact, and then of course you have procurement delays. Any project that requires any kind of procurement will most likely have procurement delay as an identified risk. Now, we also have the probability and impact values for each of these risks. And then of course we have the P into I values. And this is basically a quantitative risk analysis of all the risks of a project. Now, like I was saying, this table basically lists all the risks of a project along with their quantitative analysis, the P into I value. So these values, the P into I value that we have, they are basically absolute values. So what we are basically saying here is that if a procurement delay was to occur, the probability is 0.5, the impact is 0 0.7. So the P and I value is 0.35, but can you be 100% sure that this is the impact procurement delay is going to have on your project? See, the fact is risks need not always have absolute values. Risks can actually have range. So while procurement delay here mentions a P into I value of 0.35, there is a possibility that procurement delay can cause a delay of two weeks or it can cause a delay of two months. So this 0.35 value or this impact of 0.7 is actually incorrect of sorts because the true picture here could be in a range, a range of two weeks to two months right so how do you represent this range this is where you enter the tornado diagram so tornado diagram this is where it comes in handy and it represents this risk of procurement delays not as an absolute value but as a range so this is how uh, tornado diagram would look like and we'll have a magnified version in the coming slides but just to let you know this is how tornado diagram looks like and you can see i hope you can read it this is procurement delays and there is a range when it comes to procurement delays So here's the magnified version of the tornado diagram we saw in the previous slide you've got training gap extending test coverage due to quality issues requiring more resources then you've got schedule impact due to year end holidays missing the coding milestone due to scope change and of course procurement delays and here is where you can see the range of all these risks the impact 
that these risks, if they materialize, may have on your project. So we have basically reserved 60,000 US dollars just for risks in your project. Now, the procurement delay, the risk that we were talking about, this is something that when you look at isolation, you're looking at just procurement delay here. You are avoiding all other risks. You think that none of these are going to materialize. You're only concentrating on procurement delay. This is where you have a range. Procurement delays could cost as low as $10,000 or they could cost as high as 90,000 US dollars in your project. So the sensitivity that the project has because of this risk is $10,000 to $90,000. This is the uh, sensitivity of the particular procurement delay risk. Now, each of these risks, they can also have further sub diagrams, sub tornado diagrams, which means within procurement delay, there could be other risks. And for each of those risks, there could be a certain range, right? So each of these risks can actually have a sub tornado diagram as well. And I hope you can see a tornado here. We basically put the risk with the lowest range on the top and the risk with the highest range at the bottom. Some texts might have this diagram upside down and they might call it that they might say that this one is actually upside down. So to each its own, uh, basically, I hope you can see a tornado structure here, a tornado shape here, which is why uh, this diagram is known as tornado diagram. So before we end the video, here's the question for today. In your day to day work where you are managing projects, what are you more comfortable using? Are you more comfortable using absolute numbers or are you more comfortable using ranges? For me, absolute numbers are the best. If I knew that procurement delay is going to cost 20,000 US dollars, not more, not less, it would make life much more easier for me. But that is not how it always works in real life. And that is why you have ranges as well. Let me know in the comments, what are you more comfortable using? So that's all that we had in this video. I hope you were able to understand the concepts of sensitivity analysis and tornado diagrams. Smash that like button if you got value out of this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon to stay notified every time we upload new content. And don't forget to check out the website pmclounge.com, your number one free PMP resource. Thank you.